What is going on between the European Union and the United States, and are we heading ultimately to a trade war? Uh, well, we just had those uh, discussions uh, among EU trade uh, ministers, so EU-US uh, trade uh, relationships, also in the context of upcoming Trade Technology Council, which is uh, going to take place in Maryland on 5th of uh, December. Uh, so there are many uh, avenues how we are uh, deepening our uh, cooperation in trade area, but at the same time there are major concerns concerning this Inflation Reduction Act and the discriminatory provisions against EU uh, companies across the whole range of uh, areas, uh, electrical cars, batteries, uh, renewables, energy intensive uh, industries. So currently we have a joint EU-US high level task force which is uh, working on uh, this and uh, hopefully uh, producing uh, the results. I would say the message uh, from the ministers was uh, very uh, clear that we need to see concrete uh, results and we need to see the EU concerns uh, addressed. And you've talked about concerns now. You also said uh, discrimination, potentially. The concern is that Europe is not going to get a good deal out of this. But I wonder, in the talks that you have already with the Biden administration, do they listen? Do they understand the problem? Because the Germans say, potentially, the issue here is that they just don't understand the concerns. It's not they want to fight a trade war. They just don't understand the problems for us. Uh, well, uh, what we are asking is basically uh, fairness. We want uh, European companies and European exports uh, to be treated the same way in U.S. as U.S. companies and U.S. exports are being treated in the EU. So that's what we are uh, asking to give a concrete uh, example. For example, electrical uh, vehicles. We are also providing subsidies in EU for electrical uh, vehicles, but we are doing it in a non-discriminatory way. So also, for example, European consumers can buy Tesla made in uh, US and get the subsidy. And uh, actually there are uh, uh, consequences. For example, in September the most sold uh, model of the car in Germany was Tesla model uh, Y. Uh, so uh, uh, so uh, in a sense we have to, uh, want to have the uh, same uh, non-discriminatory treatment also in case of US subsidies. And can I ask you, you, you talk about the, the talks, of course you refer to Tesla, I guess you want to see German cars also, not just German, but Europeans also being sold in the United States. When do you expect the Biden administration to say, okay, we hear you, we can fix this? And the question is, if they don't, do you foresee that ultimately we're going to go back to a replay of the Trump administration with tariffs going both ways? Uh, well, uh, EU and US share a strategic partnership, and I would say it's especially important in uh, current geopolitical uh, context when we are uh, dealing with Russia's aggression against uh, Ukraine. So it's important that we are uh, cooperating and we are uh, uh, united, and that's indeed why it's so important that this uh, Inflation Reduction Act is being addressed and it doesn't become uh, another irritant in our uh, relations. And of course, you mentioned the context uh, of the war here. Uh, this week, uh, we've seen a lot of talk but not a lot of actions on things like the price cap. Again, some of the tensions uh, between the different member states in the European Union. Will this unity hold, especially as the winter gets tough for Europeans in the face of Russia? Uh, well, uh, Europe has responded in a, a united and strong uh, way. So far, we had come forward with uh, eight packages of uh, sanctions against uh, Russia. We had uh, uh, provided uh, substantial support to Ukraine. We are determined to uh, continue so. Uh, currently, indeed, there are discussions on uh, price cap on Russian oil. I would say it's not only among the EU, but because we need to agree it at a G7 level, because it's a G7 price cap. So, uh, yes, uh, there are discussions. Uh, uh, there are countries which are insisting on a smaller price cap because it's uh, true. If you put a uh, price cap too high, it's not really, it doesn't really bite uh, because uh, actually oil is the biggest source of revenue for uh, Russian budget. So it's very important to get this right so that it has really uh, impact on Russia's possibilities to finance this war. And, and, and some say ultimately Vladimir Putin with this cap or no cap, he's still making money in your view. And of course, you come from a Baltic country. Should the European Union, the West, to increase the pressure further? You have to break the Russian economy, and that means the energy. 
Uh, well, uh, indeed, I think we need to continue to put pressure on Russia as long as aggression uh, continues. So now the next practical stop e uh, step is indeed this uh, uh, price cap, and it's important to get it right, to find the right level that really uh, bites. And Mr. Dombrovskis, I know you were in Ukraine last week. Uh, before we get into the help uh, from Ukraine on the European side, I wonder if you could describe uh, the situation there, because we get reports that the country is now very cold. There's no water. There's no electricity. This is happening in 2022. For many, it's incredible that you have a country that's gone blackout. When you were there, what was the situation like? Uh, well, uh, indeed, I was in uh, Kiev uh, last uh, week, and the uh, situation is very uh, serious uh, because Russia is deliberately targeting uh, uh, Ukraine's civilian infrastructure. So there are problems with access of um, heating, electricity, uh, water. So they are really uh, aiming for a uh, humanitarian catastrophe because uh, uh, it's uh, uh, getting cold. Winter is starting. There was already snow in uh, Kiev last uh, week. So so uh, also from that point of view, it's important we provide uh, Ukraine with ne necessary air defense systems so that they can protect their critical infrastructure and ensure minimum functioning of uh, all those uh, key utilities. And, and of course, uh, you have been spoken about, about Russia and some of the threats uh, that it poses. The idea now for some is that Russia on the battlefield cannot win. It, it will not sustain occupation of Ukraine. So what they want to do is break the spirit of Ukrainians by making their life hell. Based on your knowledge of Ukraine, your conversations with the Ukrainian government, is that going to happen or will these people say we'd rather freeze but we want nothing to do with Russia? Well, there is a very strong uh, determination in uh, Ukraine. We also saw it in uh, Kiev uh, that people are really ready to resist, but we need to uh, provide them with uh, necessary uh, support. And in just as a final question, especially now we have our, our international audience, European, uh, American also, but a global audience that at times finds it difficult to, to figure out what's going on in the situation. Once again, why is it important in your view that Ukraine ultimately emerges victorious for this. What are the consequences if Ukraine fails and Russia prevails? Uh, well, uh, indeed, it's not only uh, a conflict between uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine. It's uh, really Russia is not uh, hiding it, that it's in an imperialist mood, that it's going to invade uh, other countries. So the conflict is going to uh, spread. So it's important to stop this Russia's uh, aggression, to uh, stop the spreading uh, of the war. So uh, in a sense, it's not Russia against uh, Ukraine, it's autocracy against against uh, democracy, it's about entire European security uh, architecture and with repercussions across uh, uh, the world.